that conclude our critical survey of this brief interaction between Greg Hochul and Natasha Crane, disparaging the progressive Christian movement insofar as it is a movement. In the previous video, Greg Hochul had said progressive Christians are just seem to be aligned with culture and uh, question whether they're Christians at all. And now Natasha Crane's going to just come in with her final comments. So we're going to watch in 30 seconds or something, and then we'll debrief that on the other side. It, that's exactly right. I think that when you uh, reject the authority of God and you re reject the authority of the Bible and you're back to yourself, you're going to start looking more and more like culture. Uh, like all the other people who have the authority yeah. of the self, because now we're all coming back to the popular consensus. It's a great irony that we have a lot of authority of the selves running around, but yet they all converge on a popular consensus about what morality yeah. should look like, even though there's no objective basis within their secular worldview for having that. So it's, it is really a fascinating uh, direction that you see happen. As I said last time, I think it's clearly evidenced that what underlies Greg Kochel and Natasha Crane's view is a naive biblicism, which assumes that the only objective criterion or basis by which one can make or form doctrine is the Bible. Uh, and so if you reject the Bible, then any there are no other objective sources at all to make judgments about theological issues or ethical issues or other issues, sociopolitical, et cetera. And that's why they assume that if you reject the Bible, you've rejected any basis apart from the mere subjectivity of the self. So that is this assumption that underlies their analysis, which is just obviously erroneous. Second thing underlying that is when they talk about rejecting the authority of the Bible, really what they're talking about is rejecting the authority of their hermeneutic or their interpretation of the Bible. So the interpretation that's commonly held among conservative evangelicals like Kokel and Crane, if you reject that, that interpretation of the Bible, then on their view, you are rejecting the Bible. And that is a very dangerous view because when you conflate your theological interpretation of the Bible with the Bible itself, so that anybody who rejects your view has thereby, in your mind, rejected the Bible. You now undercut any ability to critically introspect on your view and to consider ways in which your view may not, in fact, be faithfully aligned with the message of Scripture or the broader orthodox trajectory of the Christian church itself. So that is a second big problem here. Now, the last thing I want to consider is a great irony in what Crane says here, because she talks, I think, in a disparaging way about, quote unquote, progressive Christians just being ruled by the authority of self. On her view, progressive Christians are just forming doctrine based upon their own subjective intuitions of the way things are. And what is totally absent from that analysis apart from any charitable engagement with actual self-identified progressive Christians or people that folks like Coco call progressive Christians, like Brian Zahn, Peter Enns, or Rachel Hald Evans. Uh, what is absent from that is any awareness of, in fact, the degree to which conservative evangelicalism represented by people like Coco and Crane is, in fact, a highly individualistic take on Christianity. Because on this approach to Christianity, there's very little emphasis on creeds or uh, canonical catechetical formation within the broader historical tradition, traditions of churches. Uh, rather, is a highly intellectualized and individualistic approach where you're inculcated into the teaching of specific apologetic ministries, which are not responsible to, for the most part, to any broader ecclesial authority. So in other words, Hochul's Stand to Reason ministry is just out there as an independent ministry. It's not subject to any particular Protestant tradition or authority. They just all balls and strikes as they see them within their evangelical subculture uh, without the awareness of being rooted into a broader Christian tradition. Now, where this kind of individualism takes its most extreme expression is when you'll have, and this is rife 
within the conservative Christian evangelical apologetic subculture is that people that grow up within that subculture often become self-appointed heresy hunters. The way that you see that is, for example, you'll have people, well, they've they've listened to Greg Kokel's Stand to Reason podcast or uh, and Bill Craig's Reasonable Faith podcast, and they've read a couple books by conservative Christian authors like Sean McDowell, Lee Strobel. And based upon that, they now position themselves as arbiters of orthodoxy and heresy. And so they will say, uh, well, Brian Zond is a heretic. And then they'll you know, post a tweet about how Brian Zond is a heretic and he's not a Christian at all. Uh, and they'll post a blog article or a YouTube, post a YouTube video. And they are the arbiter of who is orthodox and who is a heretic, who is in and who is out. Who appointed that individual to be the arbiter of orthodoxy? Who appointed them to say that Brian Zond or Rachel Held Evans or Peter Enns or anybody else is or is not a Christian? Well, it is the entire ethos of the conservative Christian apologetic industrial complex that equips them. The whole idea and approach to equipping for ministry within this evangelical apologetic subculture is highly individualistic because there is no accountability to creeds and catechisms and church authorities in rendering the very serious and significant judgments of, for example, orthodoxy, heresy, heterodoxy. Uh, instead, people go off on their own because they've got some limited smattering of their own personal reading and education, and they've watched podcasts and YouTube debates and now they're going to be the one to judge whether Rachel Held Evans was ever a Christian or whether Peter Enns is, in fact, now a Christian. And that is, in fact, a highly individualistic expression of conservative evangelicalism represented by people like Natasha Crane and Greg Kokel. So the fact that they call out progressive Christians who, in my experience, for the most part, have a much greater awareness of church tradition, church rooting, the nature of communal corporate confession of creeds, the fact that they call those people out as individualistic when they are the ones who are rendering these individualistic judgments of fellow Christians just shows the irony and lack of critical self-introspection that is so commonly definitional of conservative Christian apologetics and the disciples that it produces.